you can definitely create realistic renders with all the tips throughout this video. But the last tip is crucial to check if your lighting is correctly optimized. So make sure to watch the video all the way through the end to learn all of the things you need to create realistic renders. So there's two different types of lighting that we can utilize in rendering and endscape in general. So there's natural lighting and artificial lighting. So let's first get into natural lighting. So over here in the endscape tab, you can see that we have a sun source coming through our window. Actually, we can make it more intense or less with the actual sun brightness slider that we have in the visual settings. So over here, we can turn that down and have it something like this, or we can make it up and actually make the sun more intense. This is a very simple technique and just actually something that is very basic for you. Now, if you want to change the position and change the way that the shadows are casting onto our image, make sure to hold the shift button and the right click on your keyboard. And as you can see, as I'm moving, it is also changing the time of day so we can have the sun closer to the window or a little bit deeper onto our room here. Now, if this is still not gathering the right amount of shadows that we need or the right angle, you can still change the seasons in the shadow section here in SketchUp. So for example, we can go to February, and we can also change the time of year or the actual date as you can call it as well. You can also change the time of day at nighttime if that is what you want to achieve with the renders. But as of now, we're just going to leave it to something like this. This is the actual main thing on how we create lighting. If you want to go ahead and make it a little bit more advanced, you can go ahead and go to the sky section in the visual settings here. And then we're going to choose a skybox source. So with a skybox source, we're going to import an HRI, which is basically an image taken in real life that we're going to apply onto our environment and it's going to make our lighting much more realistic and much more closer to real life. So I'm just going to load the skybox from file and go to the file location that I have my HRI downloaded and I'm going to choose the midday one. And as you can see now, a lot of materials are emitting the colors that the actual HRI has. So right now I'm just going to move a little bit backwards and as you can see the whole environment looks much more realistic rather than previously. Now I would definitely recommend you to keep the sun brightness very low in landscape because it seems to be very harsh at times. So uh, maybe in this instance we can also tweak the exposure. So if we go to auto exposure you can see that it's well better lit up right now than it was previously. So once again we can also tweak the brightness if we want to make it warmer or anything like that. However, we can use different type of HDRIs and test them out and see which would be the best option in our instance. So I'm going to choose another one. And now you can see kind of the differences in how each of one affects the image different from one another. So for now, we're just going to leave this at something like this one. So these are kind of the two ways that we can use natural lighting to make our image. However, the image won't look complete and won't look very good until you combine both artificial lighting and natural lighting. So let's get into this. But if you've enjoyed the video so far, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss any new tips that have to do with 3D rendering and Enscape. So over here, we're going to take a look at some of the artificial lighting options that Enscape has. Now, in order to open those options, we're going to need to go to the Enscape Objects tab which is right here. So this plus icon actually imports lighting objects for our scene. So I'm going to go ahead and use the sphere light first. So the sphere light, we can use it with basically doing three clicks. So first one is just going to choose the center, the second one, the height, and now it is already there. And now if I get closer to this object, you can see that there's some light emitting from this. Now we can also change the radius of the light as you can see the actual effect that it's having. And we can also change the intensity of it. Now with just like any other light source, we can apply a color to it. So for example, if I get even closer and I go to the sketch of materials, I'm going to go to colors and I'm just going to select a warmer color and I'm just going to apply it right here. As you can see, the color that the actual lighting emits changed and this is the same with all the other types of lighting. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you all of the other lighting objects, which are very similar to the one that I showed you right now. For example, spotlights can be useful in cases where we actually have ceiling lights or recessed lights. So to actually showcase this, I'm just going to click once where I want to place it. 
the second time for the center and then we'll actually click the trajectory from which the light source will distribute the light itself. So I'm going to click once again and now as you can see I'm going to get closer and if I change the intensity to a little bit higher you will be able to see the effect of the spotlight that we just placed. And we can also change the beam angle of it as well. Now, if you want to go even further with this, which is a little bit more advanced, you can always download IS profiles from the website in the link in the description. I'm not affiliated with any of the websites down there that I showed throughout the video. But this is just to help you find resources way easier. Now, what an IS profile does is it actually imports all the parameters that the lighting needs to distribute light even more realistic. After you've downloaded the IS profile from the website that I showed you, you can just go over here and click load IS profile and I'm going to choose a random one because we don't need it to be super particular right now. So I'm just going to click download IS profile and then wherever that file was downloaded. So for example, in this instance, it was a download. I'm just going to import it and it will actually change how the light is distributed. So over here, if I move closer to wall, you can see that I placed two different spotlights and one of them has an IS profile applied to it. So the one on the right and the left one has a default landscape spotlight distribution. And in this instance, as you can see, the distribution of the IS profile is way different from the actual spotlight. And we can also do the same thing as we did with the sphere light and we can apply a color to make it even warmer. If we would like it, we can make it kind of colder and just apply a blue color or whatever kind of color you want the actual light to have. Obviously, I'm not going to use any of these. These are just for showcasing purposes. Now we can also move on to the line light, which is actually one of the most useful lights for a lot of cases. And in our instance, right, here, we used a little bit of them on the shelves or we can also use a rectangular light, which is basically the same thing. But however, I'm just going to apply this line light on the ceiling. Once again, we need one click then two clicks and then boom, it's already there. Now with the line light, we can also change the length of it and make it a lot more longer. And we can also turn on the intensity. And as you can see, this is the effect that it has. This might be useful for LED lighting that you have in your design or anything similar to that. Now what we can also do with this one is that right now you can see that the length is maxed out, but you can also copy it and move it anywhere you want. Now, one thing you have to remember with line lights and all the lines in general. So for example, if I just copy these line lights over here, all of the copies of lights become instances. And when I change the length of one of them, it will change the length of all of them as well as the intensity. So keep that in mind. If you have different parameters for different type of line lights, don't just copy the light because it makes a huge difference. And now this is the case only with the regards of the settings that you can do through the Enscape Objects app. But when it comes to lighting color that it emits, it will be only applied to the one lighting that you actually apply it to. Now the rectangular lighting and the disc light are basically the same thing. They just differ in the way that the light is distributed in the shape of it. So I'm not going to waste your time with that. And let's just get on to some more advanced stuff. Now in Enscape, there's times where we don't actually want to use the Enscape Sun. Now the Enscape Sun in default works all right, but I want to show you a technique which is called fake lighting and it kind of improves your scene most of the time. So to use this technique, we're going to go ahead and draw a line in the exterior of an opening that we have in our scene here. And I'm just going to draw a trajectory from which I want the light to come from. So I'm going to choose the spotlight right here and I'm going to click once on the center of it and then once on the trajectory that I want it multiplied it. So once I've created one spotlight, now I want to make sure that I actually multiply this. So I'm just going to copy it once and I'm going to type in 5x in my keyboard and then I'm just going to actually copy it vertically as well. So something like this. And now I'm just going to turn on the luminous intensity much higher and also make the beam angle at maximum. And now, as you can see, it looks like there's more balanced light coming from the outside rather than the sun, which makes the shadows a lot harsher and not soft enough, at least for my liking. Now, that is one technique that we can use to make the lighting better in our scene. And that is just basically using one main light that we can do on our scene here. Now, there's also different types of techniques that we can use. Now, another feature that you actually have to be aware of is 
that, for example, in this lamp right here, if I actually apply a sphere light on top of it, something like this, you can see that the light is distributing, but the lighting object itself is not lit up. So to change this, we're going to need to actually select the material that the lamp has, and then we're going to go to the Enscape Objects tab, and then we're going to choose the self-illuminated option, and now, as you can see, the actual material looks like it is lit up. Now, just like with the other lighting options, we can also change the color on this one. So, for example, we just choose a color and we can make it warmer or we can make it any type of color that we want. If these available colors are not enough for you, you can always change it over here in the advanced section. Now, there's also different type of ways that we can utilize lighting or, as I said, fake lighting for interiors. So for example, we can use the line lights and just make them a little bit larger and then multiply them by four times. And now we can make them vertically. We can make it a group actually. We can make it vertically. We can rotate it once again. And now we move it upwards. And as you can see, some dark areas over here are actually getting lit up. Now this technique you have to be very careful with because you can actually mess your whole scene. So right now it just looks weird. I know you lit up a dark area that was previously, but this just doesn't look right. So for some instances, this is very useful. So let's say over here at the statue that we have, we can move this a little bit upwards, rotate it a little bit, move it a little bit backwards. And now I'm just going to tone down the intensity and this is kind of a way to bring up some of the features that are missing. I know this seems very fake in your logic because it was my thought when I was initially introduced to this concept because there wasn't actually a light source there. But you have to understand that in rendering you also have to kind of blend in all the features that we need to make the render much better. Now this step is crucial to check your lighting quality in your renders and I don't see this getting mentioned enough online. So over here at the visual settings, we have different modes that we can select. Now I want you to select light view. And why I want you to select this is that through this filtering, we can see which areas are actually not lit enough or which areas have too much lighting. Now this doesn't mean that you 100% have to follow the actual structure that we are shown over here, but this is just an indicator of how well your actual image is lit and if there is enough contrast for example in this image now for example if i go ahead and just tone down the artificial light brightness in the settings you can see that this area is more gravitating to the blue colors which means that that part is not lit enough now i'm going to go ahead and change this back to default and as you can see it's more on the greens which means it's more well balanced I really want you to check this mode out and check your lighting through this. If you want to learn how to create incredible scenes like the one that you're seeing on the screen right now, you can definitely check the Enscape Expert program in the link in the description. Now we have cover lighting and this is just one aspect of 3D rendering, which is not enough to take your renders too realistic. So if you want to learn how to create realistic materials, make sure to watch the video right here.